Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha. Welcome to What's on Your Mind Hawaii. I'm Tim Apicella, your host. Today, we look at two topics. The first is about the air quality on the Big Island, specifically the unhealthy VOG levels in Kona. Residents are concerned that the air quality alerts and news stories are not being issued out of concern of reduced tourism. The second issue focuses around the recent NFL rule requiring players to remain in the locker room or stand on the field while the national anthem is being played. Yesterday, President Trump disinvited Super Bowl champs, the Philadelphia Eagles, from the White House with only one day notice because few players were willing to attend. So now let's take a look at the yesterday's air quality map in Kona. As you can see, um, the Big Island, uh, all the green spots basically showing fairly good air quality. And then you have the two red dots uh, showing areas of concern for air quality. And, uh, the ratings is 160 and 142. Basically, anything over a 150 is um, an alert that all residents should be aware of, not just those people that have uh, respiratory, uh, respiratory problems. So to talk about this and a little bit more is our guest today, a Kono resident, Mingo. Welcome to What's on Your Mind, Hawaii. Hey, Tim. Thanks for having me on. Oh, my, our pleasure. So you live in Kona, and uh, you've noticed in the last week or so, week and a half, um, you've had some pretty bad cases of uh, air quality issues. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about it? Well, it started, of course, when the eruption began over a month ago, Tim, and it's been getting progressively worse. And on Tuesday, we blew a 154, which is in the dark orange, unhealthy for everybody range. And then yesterday, we were back up to 153. And it's ranged, you know, from the 80s to the high 120s uh, in the week since, you know, between those dates. And right now we're a little bit better, but I'm looking out my window at the ocean and I cannot see the horizon. And normally I see a real crisp demarcation line between the sea and sky. So it's bad. Um, but the, the weird thing is that we're not being told how bad it is by anybody in the, in the uh, TV broadcast media. And also, I think during these, these bad days, and I've confirmed this with uh, both Civil Defense and the Department of Health, uh, the Air Quality Division, is that there's really no um, official broadcast or, or, or alert about um, a high rating of um, bad air quality. That's true, Tim, and it's to us over here, because imagine, like looking at the map you showed, imagine if the tables were turned. Imagine if that 160 was in Honolulu, and that nice green four was over Kona. Do you think that Hulu News Now, oops, I mean Hawaii News Now, would actually broadcast it and talk about it? Okay. I mean, they have plenty of time to talk about Bruno Mars and Honolulu traffic, but this is a very serious issue that is not being covered. So do you think that's just how the news cycle works here in the state? Because Honolulu has, you know, close to a million people and Big Island doesn't? Or do you think there's some other ulterior motive uh, as to why the reporting is not occurring? Well, there could be a bit of Big Island fatigue going on right now because, you know, we have to give credit where credit is due. They have all been doing an incredible job covering the lava eruption, and they've been doing it with great compassion and with amazing detail. And in some cases, they've been risking their own safety to give us incredible video images. Um, but there is another priority that is not being covered, and that is you know, when you talk about the coverage of air quality, they basically stop down at the Ka'u district, but the whole west side of the uh, Big Island is being deeply affected by this. And we're just all wondering when we're going to be mentioned. I mean, there was a 30-second mention on one of the news stations, and then there was an eight-second mention on another one, but these are all dovetailed into economic impacts. In fact, I remember the other day, one of the people was talking about how the Pride of America uh, cruise ship was skipping Hilo and Kona again this week, citing Kona air quality. And his closing statement was, this is going to result in financial losses of about $1 million. Not one sentence or one word about the health impacts to everybody living and working in Kona. Well, that's true. And I actually, I found a quote from uh, one of the legislatures from your district, uh, Nicole Lowen, and she was quoted to say, uh, the following, 
We deserve information for the county, the State Department of Health Air Quality, to uh, basically have our questions asked. So that's quite a statement. Uh, apparently there's a feeling, not only from you, but uh, from, your, from your representatives that uh, information and alerts and warnings aren't forthcoming quite, quite well enough. That's true, Tim. And Nicole's been doing a really good job. In fact, there is a meeting tomorrow night right here in Kona to get citizens' questions uh, answered. But remember that we're over a month into this. And there's still no alert on the news. There's no mention of the actual rating of poor air quality. Um, it, it, you know, it kind of reminds me about that old movie Jaws when, you know, they were having the shark attacks and the mayor went, ran up to uh, Police Chief Brody and said, get everybody back in the water. There's no problem here. Um, okay. you know, I remember that very well. Economy. Yeah, I mean, the mayor's running up and down the beach going, hey, Chief Brody, you get those people back in the water right now. There's no problem here. And Chief Brody's like, uh, yeah, we got a little problem here, Mr. Mayor. So, you know, of course, the focus on the lava zone is important. Those people are losing their dreams, their jobs, their money. That, that is the most important, no question. And the coverage of that, as I mentioned, has been fantastic. But there is a statewide issue. The west side of the island is being deeply impacted. And it would be nice to get just a cursory mention of the level of air quality so that people can prepare. You know, I'm a healthy guy, and I've had really bad problems with my sinuses, my eyes burn, my throat's really dry. And if I'm a healthy person experiencing this, I can imagine what somebody who's not healthy has to deal with when they go outside. So your point is at least before, you know, before everyone goes outside for the day, it'd be nice to hear from some agency, whether it's civil defense or the Department of Health uh, Air Quality Division, someone to actually issue um, an alert saying that things are rather unhealthy, not only people with respiratory issues, but with people, all people that live in the, in the area. Exactly, Tim. And here's what, we, here's what we deal with in the world we live in today. If you don't get in front of the message, people are going to fill in the blanks by themselves. And I'll give you a perfect example. There's a, you know, a lot of online forums, and there's places for people to go rate businesses like Yelp. And there's a woman who's been online bashing a local hotel because she asked what the air quality was like, and she feels that she was misled. And so she came over here anyway and got very sick, and so now she's online bashing them, and that is going to last forever. You know, online posts don't go away. They don't expire. And this is the world we live in now, so you can't ignore these impacts for some short-term you know, gain to a local business without really realizing the long-term ramifications, because if people feel that they're not being dealt with fairly and honestly, they are going to have you know, anger issues to deal with down the road. You, just, you have to be truthful, you have to give them clear and accurate information, and it has to be timely. Well, I think the point of communications is, is well-founded, because um, as of today, in today's Star Advertiser, um, it looks like civil defense, in conjunction with the Department of Health Air Quality Division, uh, they're talking about a website to centralize air quality reporting. So in the, in, the, in the headline, it says centralize, meaning that there's information coming from all over, but maybe people aren't catching, catching on to where it's located. So what I'm gathering through this article is that um, it's not enough to just have sporadic websites. It's important to have an official website in conjunction with uh, news announcements on TV and radio. Exactly, because you can't make the assumption that everybody has a computer or everybody is really Internet savvy. You know, there's a lot of people that aren't comfortable with computers or tablets or don't have a, a cell phone. You know, they're not going to be able to go online to, like, purple, purpleair.com or punch in Kona Air Quality on Google and get an immediate reading. They're going to rely on their TV news. Right. Well, I know some of the, the, you know, some of the news stations have a brief mention about um, air quality, Again, most of that pertains to the east part of Hawaii Island, but not so much in the other parts. So, if anything, it sounds like there's brief mention uh, that, that affects the Kona Kailua area, but not a whole lot. Yeah, it's been very brief. You know, 30 seconds here, 8 seconds there, 10 seconds there. The, the mentions are greatly appreciated, but a little more needs to be done. And again, you know, their coverage of the actual devastation over in the lava zone has been it's been phenomenal. Um, and I can understand, you know, people may be a little fatigued with Big Island bad news, but 
you know, this is something that affects everybody. Every time you step outside, you take a breath. If that air has got a quality issue, then people need to be aware. So you live in Kona, and so you, I, I'm going to assume that you go into town. Have you noticed a, a reduction of tourists on the sidewalks, uh, or is it, does it seem to be the same as usual? It seems to be pretty much the same as usual. You know, people here are really resilient, and they're, they're a tough breed. You know, we've got a lot of people that are into fitness here in town, and I see them jogging and running. And, you know, I've read some things that say that particulate levels at sea level are a little better. I don't know if that's true or not. I'm not a scientist. But I don't notice that much of a difference. You know, Kona people are pretty tough. They're going to get through this. This is temporary. I just don't want there to be any lasting image issues that we have to deal with because people feel like they're either being misled or they're just not being given the information that's readily available. Right. Well, there's a gentleman by the name of Larry Holland. He has a postdoctorate and he's a fellow at the University of Hawaii Manoa, uh, Department of Atmospheric. Uh, Atmospheric. And um, before the eruption, it was cited that there was about 2,500 tons of particulates, or, or actually air quality issues. And now it's increased 15 to 20, 15 to 20 times more than normal. So that's that's quite an increase in um, you know air quality issues. And doesn't sound good if you're living there. Sounds like it's going to be pretty tough, and maybe more people are staying indoors more than more than normally. They are. My neighbors are. I am. You know, the reality is we live on a live, living, angry island right now, and, and Tutu Pele is not done yet. And when she's done. She'll let us know, but for right now, we just need to be aware and take the necessary precautions. I mean, it's obvious to anybody. I'm looking out my window right now at the ocean, and I do not see the horizon line. Well, but the air today is definitely better than it was yesterday. Ultimately, what would you like to see in addition to what's occurring? Do you just like to see more news alerts or news and radio alerts, or do you think there should be a more um, broad-based approach? Well, broad-based would be best. Uh, broadcast news, TV news would be excellent because everybody tunes into that. Um, it doesn't have to be long, um, just a number. And again, you know, let's go back to that map. Imagine if that 160 was over Honolulu and imagine the coverage it would get if it was over Honolulu or, you know, a populated area on Maui or somewhere else. We're, We're just all kind of stymied that it's not being reported on at all. Yeah. Well, your point's well made, and I wish you luck, and um, we'll see what happens at that public meeting tomorrow. Or is it tomorrow or tonight? It's tomorrow evening. Tomorrow evening. So I hope that goes well. I'm sure they're going to talk about air quality issues. And, Mingo, I'd like to say thank you for joining What's On Your Mind Hawaii. Your, uh, your, your comments were very important, and we appreciate it. So thank you. Thank you, Tim. I appreciate being uh, a lot on as a guest. Okay. Mahalo and aloha. This is Tim Apicell again, and now for our second, se uh, second segment, and that is about the issue of NFL's recent rule to require NFL players to stand during the national anthem. Um, this, this issue has really hit uh, the, the news, way, the news airway, way, ways quite substantially in the last couple of days. Uh, most recently, in fact, as of June the 4th at 4.55 p.m., uh, the President of the United States tweeted the following, and he said, the Philadelphia Eagles football team was invited to the White House. Unfortunately, only a small number of players decided to come, and we canceled the event. Staying in the locker room for playing our national anthem is as disrespectful to our country as kneeling. Sorry. So that's what he tweeted, and I guess before we uh, look at the next interviews here, uh, some little known facts. First fact is the national anthem didn't become official until March Third, 1931. Number two is prior to 2009, players remained in the locker room and they weren't present for the national anthem. It was only when the Department of Defense contracted with the NFL to pay the NFL to have the players come out on the field during the national anthem. So this is only a phenomenon in the last nine years. Um, and last but not least, the Eagles um, in the last season, not one player knelt uh, during the national anthem. So um, that was interesting for me to just recently find out that there was no one on the team that decided to take a knee. And so uh, let's just look at these two interviews and uh, hear two separate opinions. This is Tim Apicella with Think Tech Hawaii for What's On Your Mind Hawaii. 
And the topic today is the NFL ruling about standing for the national anthem. I'm here with Don. And Don, this is a recent announcement by the NFL, and I guess I'm just going to ask you, what do you think about it? Yeah, I definitely do not agree with it. Um, our First Amendment right is the freedom of speech. Um, I believe that the, that freedom is being taken away as far as you have to do, you know, I believe it's being taken away as far as you're forced to salute a flag, you know what I mean? Uh, a lot of people put their lives on the line. I come up from a military family. My grandfather served. Uh, I got uncles that served. I got fam little cousins that serve right now. Um, they're out there defending our rights. Um, I think as soon as you take that right away and you make them stand for the flag, it's definitely not right. Um, I'd strongly recommend that the players in the NFL stay in the locker room for now because um, I believe I actually saw a business plan. I mean, everyone do the history back home, check it out. Um, back in the day, they didn't have to come out on the field for that on the anthem. As soon as the NFL and the military made that deal together, um, all of a sudden now every, every player has to come out there. Colin Kaepernick uh, taking that knee, you know, there was a lot of things that happened, especially in the Bay Area. A lot of folks around the country, it's, it's for police brutality. Well, let me ask you this, because this was a non-issue at the end of the season. I mean, there might have been only seven or ten players across the NFL right. that was actually taking a knee. So it kind of, it kind of, kind of settled out itself. So the question is, why do you think the NFL took this on at this time? Honestly, I think it has to do with business, business and politics. Um, right now, you know, there's a lot of things going going on in our country that you know. Are, there's underlying people that want to hit it face on. Everyone kind of wants to hold back, you know, act like they don't see it. And that's part of the recognition. As soon as we recognize the problem, we can find a solution. But if we don't even see the problem, we're never going to get a solution. So, unfortunately, the commander in chief made a kind of a, a, his point to say that if you don't stand, you're not only not American, but maybe you should exit the country. Did you hear that from the president of the United States? Um, I did not, but uh, he can, you know. For him to even, his opinion is his opinion. I mean, it's Donald Trump, you know what I'm saying? And I mean, if everyone knows Donald Trump, it's about money. You know, um, the fact that he was able to get it, you know, he's a president, you got to salute him for that. He did what it, did, he did what it took to become president. Um, it did what it did, though, I think it opened our eyes to see how many people are really with the new, new world, new movement as far as, as terms of America, and how many folks are still in the past. You know, the New York Jets, the, uh, the owner, Christopher Johnson, he made an announcement that he is going to cover any and all fines for any player that does want to take a knee on the field versus uh, having them stay back in the locker room. What do you think about that? Man, that's a real coach. That's, how, that's what I salute. I'm a Raider, but uh, salute New York Jets coach. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's righteous. That's all right. You sure you wanted to go on public record that you're a, an Oakland Raider fan? I am an Oakland Raider fan, the captain. I'm with you. Uh. So do you think this is an issue? You said business and politics, mm -hmm. but do you think it's a, well, more of the politics issue is that um, trying to wrap the flag around the President of the United States and trying to him determine what is, um, what is patriotic and what isn't patriotic. Um, a lot of people feel that Donald Trump's the last person in the world to basically define patriotism. What do you think about that? Uh, I definitely agree. Um, what I've heard is I heard he, he didn't serve his country five different times, I believe, I heard. You have to do the research on that yourself, folks. But, um, yeah, man, you know, um, there's a lot of good, you know, just like the whole situation, even with the police brutality, you have very, very good cops out there that want to make a difference. There's other cops that are bad. Um, of course, there's a blue code, you know, they don't want to tell on each other. Okay, we get it. But understand that those bad cops are giving you good cops bad names. Same thing with Donald Trump. Just because he's up there and, you know, he says things that are outrageous. I'm sure he's done good things for good people in his past, and I heard about a lot of bad things he's done. But um, he doesn't represent all of us. So let me ask this question. Um, we basically had a situation where, again, the players more or less had not really, you know, the, the, the whole issue kind of just settled down, mm -hmm. and now it starts up again. If you're a player for the NFL... What are you going to do? Uh, do you think you're going to stay in the locker room, or are you going to uh, join lock arms at, on the field? Will that signify a defiance that, that President Trump or, or is, you know, uh, people that feel very patriotic, is that a disrespect to the flag and to the national anthem? Uh, depends on 
where you're at as a player as far as salary because I know all those players they they are they're regular people just like me and you you know everyone gets paid differently if you if you have the funds to afford it I would definitely still go out there and kneel pay that fine um, if you don't stay in the locker room that would be the best bet to do it that way you don't ruffle no feathers that way you can still feed your family and kind of stuff like that because when it's all said and done we all got to live on this earth together well, that's a great way to end uh, the conversation. Don, I want to thank you so much for joining me on What's On Your Mind, Hawaii. I'm Tim Apicella, and thank you. Aloha, and we'll see you soon. Blessings. Aloha, Tim Apicella with Think Tech Hawaii for What's On Your Mind, Hawaii. We're here today to talk about the new recent NFL ruling about standing for the national anthem. I'm here with Sal, and Sal, what do you think about it? Well, I think, um, you know, that's a, they run a business, so, I mean... I'm not allowed to make a gesture at my, my personal job. And I don't think that the players should use their um, job as a platform to, to protest. Well, that's a really good point. Also, speak a little louder because we got a lot of road noise here. Um, that is a good point because a lot of people are arguing that it is a First Amendment right and that the NFL is infringing upon the First Amendment. But you just hit the nail on the head, and that is when they are employed and they're on the field, they're on the company time, yes. and therefore they may not be able to exercise their First Amendment rights. So say that again, and, you know, and I think that was a good point. Yeah, well, it's a privilege to be in the NFL, um, first of all, right? Um, if they interviewed you before you're, you were selected to the draft and the rules was implemented before that, would you take that stand, right? I don't, uh, me as an individual working in, in um, you know, in a common job, I can't show up to my job and, and, and meal and, and not, not do what my company expects me to do. Have so, you ever gone to an employer and saying, hey, I want to say what I want to say because it's my first amendment, amendment right? Have you ever said that to an employer? Well, when you apply for a job, you're applying for the job under the circumstances and what is expected of, you, of the job. So, in that sense, um, it, it never crossed my mind. I, uh, you know, I, I, I didn't ex accept the job and tell myself, well, when I get this job, I'm going to uh, protest against whatever, you know. Did you have any reaction to President Trump basically saying that if they don't stand for the national anthem, even though they come out of the locker room, that maybe they should depart the country. Did you hear him say that? Yeah, I heard him say that. You know, President Trump, at, at times, he's not very presidential. You know, I didn't vote for Trump, and I didn't vote for Hillary. So at the same time, I'm more conservative than I am liberal. So in that sense, you know, what, what Trump said didn't really have anything to do with what Kaepernick uh, is protesting about. So, um, to me, I think Kaepernick, if he wants to protest, well, why don't you go volunteer and be a police officer? Put yourself in a police officer's put, um, situation. You know, go work one whole month. You got money. Take, when you're not working in the NFL, go volunteer. Be a policeman where, 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 wherever this, um, you know, stuff that yeah. going against the police. So if you were an NFL player yeah. and you felt very strongly that you were protesting something very close and very close to your heart and something that really had a lot of meaning to you and that's what a lot of these are, yeah. players are doing, right, right. would you be one to just stay in the locker room and then later come out or would you, um, would you come out and take a knee and take the penalty? Well, I, I, first of all, I would respect the flag. That's, uh, the, the, the flag represents our freedom. Regardless, like, you know, we're Hawaiian people here in Hawaii and, and our government was overthrown, you know, in the name of, so to speak, Christianity and, and, and um, I can't think of the correct word, but, um, word, but uh, I'll get to it. But, um, you know, you got to stand up for what you feel, but there's a time and a place. Like I said, if you want to. If you want to protest, well, go volunteer and be a police officer. Look at two sides. You're only looking at one side, right? Do you remember the 1968 Summer Olympics in Mexico and the track and field um, awards? And there was two African-American yes. players that uh, raised their fists with yes. black gloves on. And they took a lot of heat for that, a lot of heat. Um, do you think it's a similar situation right now? 
Well, I don't think it's similar. You know, they're on a national platform, and and they sacrificed to even get in the Olympics too. And they had a right to do what they did. But I, I don't condemn them for doing what they did. You know, they 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 use that as a platform, and you know, you can say maybe it's the same, but I, I don't think so. Do you think the timing was good for the NFL to, to make this call, or do you think it could have been done at a later time? Because the issue was almost over. Um, there was only seven people or ten people at the la- end of last season that was actually taking a knee. So do you just think the timing was real bad on this? I think there was a little more than that, you know. Um, what, what, what do you think? What else was more? There were more people that were protesting than seven people, I think. I'm, you know, I may be wrong, but I think more people were contesting than seven but um like i said the platform you know the the nfl is a business right and they were losing money nobody wants to admit that they were losing money because of the protesting so like i said i think do you think standing in the locker room waiting for the anthem to end is a good partial solution to those players that feel very this is a very important issue to them and and um not forcing them to stand during the, the anthem? Do you think that's an elegant solution? I think the solution would be like the media shouldn't focus on, on, on the players who are kneeling. Go ahead, you want to kneel? Well, you're going to kneel to all the people that's attending the game. But for a national, I, I watch the NFL to watch the NFL, you know, to get away from politics, to enjoy the sport of the NFL. So you think the sports announcers should just steer, steer clear of it and just not even put it on camera when it happens and just go with the game, just, just report on the game? Yes, that's, I'm, I'm tuning into the network to watch the game, not to, if I want to watch anything political, then I'll turn it on, on, on the news. Or... You go to ESPN after the game. Well, even ESPN, I mean, sports and politics, it should, it should be separated. Uh, that's my opinion. Okay, Sal. Well, hey. Sports for sports. Sports for sports. Sal, thank you so much for taking your time. I'm Tim Apicello with Sal, and this is What's on Your Mind Hawaii for Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Welcome back, and thank you very much for tuning in to What's on Your Mind Hawaii. Our next show is on June the 19th, and look forward for you to come back and check out the show. Aloha.